Good morning and blessings to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, happy St. Francis Day. <laughs> you know, after, uh, after extensive planning, um, we put it all together so that we would have a beautiful service under a blue sunlit sky, and God had other things in mind. <laughs> For those of you who are watching this on the internet, uh, today's um, sunrise came under heavy clouds and with what appears to be 40 or 50 mile an hour winds at some point, uh, but it's just a reminder of how awesome the creation is uh, that God has given us. And so, given that we have animals running around, including Gabby, and what's the name of this uh, little... Valentino. Valentino, wow, how romantic. <laughs> uh, and at least one fish in the back who's uh, keeping to him or herself at this point. Um, we will uh, make today's gospel lesson uh, brief, but it, it focus on really two things. Uh, the first is the letter to the Hebrews, which reminds everyone how important taking care of the creation that God has given us is. And it fits neatly, I think, into this second to last Sunday of the stewardship campaign. Yes, second to last Sunday of the stewardship campaign. As a reminder, our stewardship campaign ends October 18th. And when we talk about in the letter to the Hebrews, when we, when we read about uh, God having created the world through Jesus Christ, and that the creation is a mirror not only of Jesus but of God, we can see that all creation around us is a reflection of God's power. We say it in the very first part of the Nicene Creed, don't we? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the letter to the Hebrews, it says, uh, the letter says that everything underfoot is under our control. <clears throat> so the way that fits into stewardship, of course, is taking care of the earth, the creation that God has given us, not just the land, the trees, and the water, but the animals that roam the earth as well. And looking around, I see exactly how that fits into stewardship at St. Gabriel's. You know, one of the reasons that I asked everyone to bring the animals to church today is that it gives us a more complete picture of the family. I know more about y'all now that I've seen Valentino. I know more about y'all now that I've seen Leviathan. <laughs> the irony, of course, is that Leviathan's tank appears to fit neatly in my hand. So I love the irony of the, uh, <laughs> the name. Nevertheless, uh, proper care of God's creation is a, is a call to all Christians. Stewardship includes not just the time, talents, and treasure that we've been talking about over the past four Sundays, caring for the creation we've been given, even including using your time and talents to take care of the land in which our church sits. Bam, an outstanding job. Just um, so much appreciate all the work that everyone has done to make our facility and our land uh, more properly cared for and uh, an honor to God. The gospel lesson also gives us an indication of why animals and the pets in our home are so important. When Jesus talks about the little children being the kingdom of heaven and a reflection of that, right? When he says to the Pharisees and the assembled disciples, these little children are uh, important and whoever sets up an obstacle to them entering the kingdom of heaven or learning more about God is going to have to answer for that. But what does he do next? He brings the kids together, holds them, and blesses them. Well, the Greek word has some, uh, some very specific connotations for children, but I tend to read that, uh, that lesson a little more broadly because I'm imagining that scene where Jesus has the little children gathered around him. And even as I'm saying it, I'm sure you all can think of that song, right, that we all have all probably learned in Sunday school, Jesus loves the little children, right? But don't you imagine there were animals there too? It's tough to think of that scene and not imagine a sheep or a goat or probably a dog running around, maybe a cat, who knows? Lord knows there were plenty of fishes around there too, <laughs> right? It's tough to imagine that scene and, and Jesus passing along this message of openness and warmth and love without imagining that in addition to the children, there were also animals. That's part of the calling that St. Francis had and the reason that we honor him this week. Not only did St. Francis love children and have as part of his ministry, education and Christian formation as we would use in the modern lingo, he obviously loved animals. 
And so that's part of the reason that we bring as much of God's creation as we can into our worship service today. In a few minutes, I'm going to open up the doors to allow a little cool air to come in and remind us of the beautiful winds that are outside, <laughs> assuming no animals are going to run off. But in the meantime, uh, brothers and sisters, I hope that you will take uh, this simple message as a, uh, as, a, as a way to kind of keep God in your heart this week. That if the, the last part of the gospel may be the most important, it's not just that little children are part of the kingdom of heaven. It's not just that animals are likewise part of creation that we are responsible for caring for. The last message our Lord gives us may be the, the simple, the most simple and the greatest. Those who appreciate the kingdom of heaven as a child will enter it. Those who appreciate the kingdom of heaven as a child will enter it. Keep that message in your heart. God loves you, and that's why he sent his only son to save us all. Amen. Thank you.